As Daniel Handler was kind enough to point out earlier, the fiction jury absolutely was the fun bunch. We bring you here war, 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 catastrophic, epidemic, child abuse, and dire homeless poverty. It reminds me of the great writer Russell Banks, who midway through his stellar career opened a copy of People magazine to find this very succinct review of his latest book. Another bummer from Banks. <laughs> but what we bring you here in these five outstanding finalists are no bummers at all. These are books about the exhilaration of being a human being, about the amazing power of art to elevate our spirits, about the redeeming power of faith and the overwhelming healing power of love. And even in the Iraq book, there's a few laughs. <laughs> so, go figure. I'm not going to complain about how many books we had to read. I'm just going to say that one of my fellow judges, the remarkable bookseller Cheryl Kotler, had to go to her local skateboard shop and get elbow pads because she was wearing out the skin of her elbows lying on her deck chair in the summer reading her books. <laughs> I had to get a handyman to come in and see if I needed to underpin my fragile 18th century house framing to see if I could sustain the number of books that were pressing on our floor. But it's a great privilege to read so many books, to see the richness of the writing that is happening in this country in a single year. We as a jury were particularly struck by the quality of the short story collections as well as the absolute majesty of many of the novels that we read. The other jurors, apart from Cheryl, were my fellow novelists, Adam Johnson and Lily Tuck, and the remarkable literary critic and scholar, Michael Gora. So. <laughs> the finalists for the National Book Award are Rabia Alamadine for An Unnecessary Woman, published by Grove Atlantic. Anthony Dorr, For All the Light We Cannot See. Published by Scribner. Phil Cly, For Redeployment. Published by The Penguin Press. Emily St. John Mandel, For Station Eleven. Published by Alfred A. Knopf. Marilyn Robinson. For Lila. Published by Farrah, Strauss, and Giroux. And the winner of the National Book Award for Fiction is Redeployment by Phil Clay. <laughs> Oh my lord. Thank you. Um, I know there's at least one Marine in the audience anymore. Some backup. Uh, just two of us? We can take them. I, um, I did not think I would be up here, so I didn't write anything until this morning when my wife said, did you write anything? And I said, no, and she said, you have to write something, so. Um, <laughs> I spent uh, 13 months in Iraq working with a truly exceptional group of Marines, combat correspondents who traveled through Anbar province, which is in the midst of the seemingly decisive and very violent struggle with Al-Qaeda in Iraq, the group which is now known as ISIS. 
I met Marine truck drivers and mortuary affairs specialists, infantrymen and adjutants, Iraqi police officers, and so many civilians whose families had been caught in the crossfire. And I came back not knowing what to think. About so many things. What do you do when you're struggling to find the words to explain to the father of a fallen Marine? Exactly what that Marine meant to you? What do you do when one of your best Marines calls you to tell you he's been drinking too much, that he feels isolated at college, surrounded by 18-year-olds he can't make sense of and who can't make sense of him? What do you make of it when the middle school students you're teaching ask you if you've killed anyone and are horribly disappointed when you say no? When strangers at a bar insist you on treating as you as though you must be psychologically damaged just because you're a vet? Or when friends of yours who do indeed have post-traumatic stress find that they can't express their legitimate feelings of grief and rage about what has happened and continues to happen overseas and at home? I don't actually have the answers to those questions, um, but the book was the only way that I knew how to start really thinking them through. Not just because there's a, a rigor involved in trying to turn fictional stories into some kind of emotional truth, but because when you write it opens up the possibility of other people responding. The philosopher Peter Sloterdijk talks about books as thick letters to friends unidentified friends who might read the work, even if across centuries, and join the conversation. And for me, writing this book <clears throat> I can't think of a more important conversation to be having. War's too strange to be processed alone. And so, I want to thank everyone who picked up the book. Um, read it, decided to join the conversation. I want to thank the judges, the National Book Foundation. I want to thank um, Peter Catapano, who first published my work and has been a tremendous advocate for veteran writers to the Hunter faculty, Colin McCann, Peter Carey, Patrick McGrath, Nathan Englander, um, who kicked my ass when it definitely deserved some kicking to John Freeman, who published my first story, to Tom Slay, who's been a mentor to me since I, before I joined the Corps, to the Marines I serve with in the community of veteran writers, especially those from the NYU Veteran Writers Program, who were essential to this book, and to all the non-veteran writers who are equally essential to the book, pointing out the blind spots I didn't know I had, to my wife, Jessica, who offered line edits alongside tremendous love and support, to my agent, Eric Simonoff, and the rest of the crew at WME, to all the folks at Penguin, especially to the incredible editor, Andrea Walker, to Liz Calamari, to Scott Moyers, one of my early supporters in the publishing world, to my family, to my grandfather, my grandparents, and Aunt Boo, and, um, and to all of you here tonight, thank you so much. <laughs>